So in this video, I want to use dimensional analysis to prove Pythagoras' theorem. And dimensional analysis is one of my favorite te techniques. It really helps me, for example, to spot mistakes I'm making, and it also helps me to better understand lots of formulae. So the key idea, and this is a simplified version, but it's all we're going to need for this video, is that any area is given by a number times a length, times a length. And if you think about it in terms of units, an area has units of meters squared, so it will always involve a meter times a meter. So let's just look at a couple of examples from geometry. So the area of a circle is pi r squared. Pi is a number and r is a length and here it is squared. Consider a sphere. 4 pi r squared is the surface area. 4 pi is the number, and here again we have a length times a length. Now, what I want to look at is a right angle triangle, because Pythagoras' theorem treats right angle triangles. So let's just consider the right angle triangle that I've drawn here. And let me say that the angle here is capital A, the angle here is capital B, this side over here, opposite capital A, I'm going to call little a. And this side down here, opposite the angle B, I'm going to call little b. And then the hypotenuse of this triangle here, I'm going to call, for obvious reasons, little c. So we have a, b, c. So what is the area of this triangle? Well, what I would like to say following the idea of dimensional analysis is that the area of this triangle is going to be given by a number and this number is going to depend upon the angles A and B and then it is going to be multiplied by two lengths, and I'm going to say that the length that sets the scale for the triangle here is the hypotenuse C. And I will try to clarify later on why this is a safe thing to do if you're not completely convinced immediately. But for the moment, I'd ask you to please just take this on trust and say that the area is going to be some function which depends upon the angles, and this is just a number, times a length squared, and it's the hypotenuse squared. So this, we say, is what the area of the triangle is going to be, and just in the way that dimensional analysis does not tell us that the area of a circle is pi r squared, it just says that it must be r squared, because r is the only length for a circle, times some number. Here we have a number times the scale which sets the size of the triangle. So what I'm going to do now is move on to the next slide, use this idea to prove Pythagoras' theorem, and then afterwards I'll come back at the end to why this is indeed a safe thing to do. So let's move on to the next slide. So on this slide, I've just rewritten what we had a moment ago, our right-angled triangle with the angles A and B, and the sides little a, little b, and hypotenuse little c. And the area, the total area of our triangle here, is a function of these two angles. So this is a number multiplied by a scale which gives us the size of the triangle and that's the hypotenuse and that is squared so that we get an area. Now what I'm going to do to try to derive Pythagoras' theorem is I'm going to draw a perpendicular here from the original hypotenuse. So this is a line which produces right angles here and here and this divides our triangle, our initial triangle, up into two triangles. This one, triangle one, and this one, triangle two. So let me just give that notation here. This is one, and this is two. And what we see, of course, is that the total area 
is equal to the area of triangle 1 plus the area of triangle 2. Now, so that we can make comparison with this, what we're going to do is work out what is the area of triangle 1, this A1, in exactly the same way, what's the area of triangle 2 in exactly the same way as here, add the two of them together and we will find that Pythagoras' theorem drops out. Now to do this let's look at the angles in triangle 1 and then triangle 2. So if I look at triangle 1 I see that the angle here is A and what we know from the initial triangle is that A plus B plus 90 added up to 180, the total angle in a, right, in a triangle. So if I look now at this right angle triangle, I have 90 here and I have A here, so I must have that this angle is B. And in exactly the same way, this angle here must be A. And there's a check of this, A plus B must add up to 90, and they do, this is a right angle in the same way that here A plus B had to add up to 90 to give the whole angle in the triangle, all three angles together, being 180. OK, so what we see is that triangle 1 and triangle 2 and our initial triangle all have the same angles, A, B and 90 degrees in them. So these are three similar triangles and of course, what we see is triangle 1 is like our initial triangle, but scaled down. Triangle 2 is like our initial triangle, but scaled down. So we can use this formula, but replace the hypotenuse in our initial triangle by the hypotenuse for triangle 1, which is B, and here for triangle 2 we can use the hypotenuse, which is A, for this right angle triangle. So what we see is that A1 is going to be a function and the angles are exactly the same times the hypotenuse squared B squared and in a similar way A2 is a function of the same angles times the hypotenuse which is now little a squared and from our identification that the total area is the area of triangle 1 plus the area of triangle 2 we see so AT is A1 plus A2 this implies that our function our number of the angles A and B times C squared is equal to our function of the angles A and B times little b squared, that's A1, plus the area of the second triangle, it's the same number because the angles are the same, times the hypotenuse squared, which is little a squared. Now, dimensional analysis normally tells you about the scales like this. It doesn't tell you what the numbers are. But in this case, we see something really rather beautiful happens. We have exactly the same number here, here, and here. So it's a common factor everywhere, and it can be cancelled. So what we see is that c squared is going to be equal to b squared plus a squared. And if I want to, I can just write that in alphabetical order as a squared plus b squared, that's this side here, is equal to c squared. And that is indeed Pythagoras' theorem. So what we have seen is that we can derive Pythagoras' theorem by saying that an area is going to be given by a length squared times a number and what we've said is that the length that characterizes a triangle is the hypotenuse. Now you could use of course one of the other sides to characterize the size of a triangle. It doesn't help as easily to see Pythagoras' theorem. This is I think a much better choice 
and on the next side I'm going to just talk a little bit about why it is absolutely safe to do this um, and if you're completely convinced already you can stop this video now otherwise you can look at the next slide. So the question that may have occurred to some people is why is it that when I wrote down the area I said it is a function of the angles multiplied by just the hypotenuse squared. Why mightn't it be say a squared or b times c or some other combination of a length times a length? And the answer is that if you think about it you can write any of the other sides a or b as the hypotenuse multiplied by a number that depends upon the angles A or B. So for example, the sine of the angle capital A is little a over C. So the sine of that angle is its opposite divided by the hypotenuse A over C. So that tells us that we can write little a as the sine of the angle A times the hypotenuse C. So if we were trying to write a factor like this, we can just rewrite A in terms of C squared times a number that depends on the angle. And the same thing, of course, is true for B. So little b is the sine of the angle, capital B, times C. And in a similar way, you could also say that little b is the cosine of the angle A times the hypotenuse C. So you see, no pun intended, that the sides A and B can always be written in terms of the hypotenuse and a number which is a function that depends upon the angles. So this is indeed a safe general formula to use. And with that, I will stop this video.